back to the shop. Today I wanted to kick off my AC repair and diagnosis series with a full on demonstration of this recovery machine right here. Now the reason why these machines are important is because a dealership or an independent shop can use them for a diagnostic tool. These newer AC systems, they are so much smaller that their tolerance level got that much smaller also for the correct amount of charge level. So a little over, a little under, the system can actually er act erratically. Now what this does, is it, it actually sucks all the refrigerant out of your AC system. It'll filter it, it'll purge the air from it, and then it'll go into a vacuum on there and it'll boil out any kind of moisture in there and refrigerant that got left in the oil in there. After that, it'll recharge it very accurately and at that point, with the system recharged accurately, it should operate properly. If it's not, then you know you have a concern within the AC system as far as one of the components in there not um, acting accordingly. So just to get a better understanding, because a lot of people ask about this, a lot of people are interested, I'm going to go through all the steps on here that it takes to recover and recharge an AC system on your Ford vehicle properly. Now the way this works is you go to the engine compartment with the engine off and you just follow the AC lines until you find one of the pressure fittings on there. Now the smaller, thinner line like this is going to have the high pressure fitting, okay, and these only go on one way. And the low pressure is going to be the fatter line on here, and that's going to have a, a smaller fitting on here. So go ahead and take those off of there. We can start connecting up our um, couplers onto there, and we can start sucking the system down. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is plug it in, obviously, get the power going, let it boot up. It does have an actual little computer inside of there, so it does take a little while to boot up. Um, so we'll get that going. Flip the unit on, let it power up, and then we'll take our couplers, our quick connect couplers, and we'll just start connecting them up to the system on there. Now there's nothing really special to this besides you want to make sure that they're fully onto there, but um, you also want to make sure that these valves are fully opened so you can clip it onto there, and then we'll just tighten them down, and we'll push down the relief valve in there, and it'll allow our refrigerant to flow through here. So we'll go ahead and connect those up to the vehicle okay and you can connect just the low side if you want you can connect the high side if you want um, but it goes a lot faster when it sucks the system down from both sides over here you'll notice the gauges went up on there that's another good indication we're connected and we're good to go um, like I said I connect both of them because both high and low side because it'll suck the system down that much faster Make sure those are fully in there and locked on. Then at that point, we can simply go ahead and hit the recover process on here. Now it's a good idea because it does suck out refrigerant and oil is to get this thing out of there. This is the oil collection unit down at the bottom there. So make sure it's empty so you get an accurate reading how much oil it pulled out with the refrigerant. Okay, at that point, all you got to do is hit recover. It'll check the pressures. Now right there, it told me the recovery pressures are low because the valves are not open. So you open them, and it will automatically start sucking the system down. Right there, it's letting the, the refrigerant flow through there, gets filtered through there, and once it gets down to zero, It'll automatically kick on the vacuum pump in there and start vacuuming the system for just a few minutes. At that point, it's up to you to go in here and select how much time you want to vacuum the system. So it'll go through and it'll tell you right here how much it actually recovered. And it has a very accurate scale inside of there because when all this comes out and gets filtered from the vehicle, it goes into the internal tank in the machine, which is on a scale. And right there, it just kicked on the vacuum pump and it'll suck the system down a little more so it can extract the final amount. Okay, so right here, it's finishing the vacuum cycle. And I'll tell you exactly what it recovered. It recovered three pounds and four ounces from the vehicle. And afterwards, it'll drain the oil. So you can go check your container down there and see exactly how much you pull out of there. 
But at this point, the system's fully been vacuumed out. Well, it's been recovered and then vacuumed out for 15 minutes. At this point, you should be able to watch your gauges on here and they should not move. That's one good indication if there's a, if there's a leak or not, especially when you're done uh, repairing it and you do a vacuum. Same thing, check these gauges, make sure they're not moving. So it'll go through and I'll tell you the weight. It's gonna drain the oil out so it gets an actual, accurate reading on how much oil it shot out of there. And in this case, as in most cases, it, 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 it pulled out about an ounce of oil with the refrigerant. Now once the repairs are done, you turn the machine back on, okay? Connect your hoses back up. You'll notice they go to zero on here. And that's because the system is open to atm atmospheric pressure at this point. So before charging, you want to go ahead and do a vacuum on the system. See so it vacuum on there. It'll check the pressures. Everything's fine. And we're going to do um, 45 minutes of vacuum on this. Usually it's 15 minutes after repair. But this system's been open for a little while and the, the truck is older. So we'll try to... Uh, you know, boil off as much moisture as possible. So we're gonna go up to 45 minutes or so and just let it run while we're putting the rest of the vehicle back together. And what this does is it actually pulls all the air out of the system, which is always good, uh, but it also boils off the moisture, same as before. So there's no moisture and no air or non-condensables in the system. Once you got your time selected, hit start. And then of course you need to make sure you open your valves. <clears throat> and it'll sound just like that when it's initially sucking all that air out of the system on there. Then soon thereafter it's gonna start purging because it's sucking so much air out. This right here, where the gauge just continually drops down to negative 30 or so, is perfect. I already know the system is fully sealed on there. So let this go for a while, and this will make sure everything is boiled out of the system on there. Okay, the system was sucked down for 45 minutes. It stops automatically, and you can see we're holding negative 28, negative 30 or so on there. It's been sitting for probably 15, 20 minutes at this point, and it's still holding, so we're perfect. We're ready to go for recharging on there. Now, at this point, when I close both valves on there, hit no, get out of that section, and then you want to inject oil into the low side port on there and pull off the high side hose. You can wrap that up. You don't need that anymore. Wrap that all up. Put our cap back on the fitting. And then we'll take our dye injector gun and inject the same amount of oil back into it. Usually it's one or two ounces, uh, depending on what you take out. Once the dye is injected, you put your low side hose back on. At this point, we start the charging process. So you hit charge on there, and then you select your units which this will select the amount, but if you hit charge again, we can change the kilograms, pounds, or pounds and ounces. So we use kilograms. Now this one being a front and rear AC system, it requires 1.64 uh, kilograms. Just go ahead and select it, and you hit start. Now at this point, it does not want you disturbing it because you're gonna mess up the weight inside of there, the weight at the bottom of the scale. So you don't disturb the unit. And in our case, with the manual valves, you wanna open the low side so it can start charging. And it'll go through and it'll charge it at the exact amount that's required by the vehicle. And it'll stop automatically. It's a very nice little setup on here. And there it is, it finished and stopped at the 1.64, perfect. At this point it wants you to equalize the hoses, which is disconnecting the high side hose, 
basically starting the system up and then we're leaving the low side on and it'll suck the remaining refrigerant out of the hose on here also. Besides that, that's all there is to it. It's pretty much an automated process and it's very, very accurate.